Hi folks, I wanted you to know that uh, I'm doing pretty well in my recovery. Uh, I'm still not 100%, but I'm very hopeful that my strength will return completely soon. Uh, as promised, here is another section of the lecture that I gave at Lower Columbia College in Longview, Washington back on October the 5th. So enjoy! Thanks for watching. The Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute would like to extend our gratitude and our thanks to Lower Columbia College for letting us lecture at the Loffman Lecture Hall on campus on October the 5th. We hope to do it again soon. We ended part one of the lecture by looking at blood vessels and how they stain with acridine orange. But now, looking inside the veins, we find these little venule valves. These tiny little valves that open and close and hold the blood in place as the heart pumps it back up to the heart and the lungs so that it can be re-energized with oxygen. These tiny little valves are covered with beautiful wisps of tissue. We have found hundreds of these little venule valves and there's obviously no need to stain for septi because these are obviously not a fungal hyphae. It's not a fungus. And so we will not stain for the septi, which we did previously. Here is the same image. Now we're under polarized light and you can see that there's no birefringence in the vein valve. Therefore, it is not calcified and it is not a woven fiber. So it is not a fungal hyphae, it is not a woven fiber, and it's not calcified. It is still a piece of soft tissue, and we're going to stain it with other stains so you can see other characteristics of these vein valves. In fact, if we stain these vein valves with acridine orange, you can see a bright return. So they are positive for RNA with the acridine orange stain. Now I'm going to show you a video that's going to show demonstrably that these are covered in little pieces of tissue. So these tiny little vein valves, it, they're a ring, and if you turn them on edge, they have a piece of vellum tissue on either side. And so when blood pressure uh, increases, those flaps open up to allow the blood to flow through, but otherwise they stay closed and prevent any movement on either side. And you're gonna see that in this video I'm about to show you. So what I did is I took a venule valve and I stained it in an aqueous solution with acridine orange. Notice the little swimming bacteria inside of it. These bacteria come back to life after the bones have been placed in an aqueous solution. So there they are. The vein, vein, vein valve has been stained with acridine orange and it's returning an RNA signal. And so are the bacteria. But you see them swimming around inside and they are unable to escape because the two little pieces of vellum tissue are still in place. This is incontrovertible evidence of a soft tissue vein valve that is still fully intact. A final test we can do on this tissue to show that it is in fact intact tissue is to stain it with a vital stain, in this case toluidine blue. Notice that the ring has taken up a good amount of the stain, but notice in the center how dark it is. Those are the two little sheets of vellum tissue wrapped around the vein valve that have taken up all that stain, showing that this is in fact a completely intact vein valve complete with the vellum tissue. Now let's go back to our bone diagram and examine some of the other components here. Notice in the top center picture a cutaway of the bone and it shows the osteons and traveling through the center of the osteons are the blood vessels and veins and also nerve fibers. So if we deconstruct a bone, we might expect to find nerve fibers as well. Now nerve cells have a dendritic cell at the end and then a long axon which trails down far away from the nerve cell. And these are wrapped in a myelin sheath. And there's also nodes that show up, kind of clamping nodes where the myelin sheath is clamped onto the axon. 
Not only that, but the nerve fiber itself is wrapped in a microtubule that is birefringent in polarized light. Therefore, if the deconstruction of a dinosaur bone would also free up nerve fibers, we should be able to see them glowing brightly in polarized light because of the birefringent uh, nature of the microtubule wrapping the axon. I don't know if you remember, but at the end of the last segment, I asked a question if anyone could identify this brightly glowing object. I was showing you blood vessels and how they are not birefringent and polarized light, but this brightly glowing object is a nerve fiber in polarized light. I want to acknowledge Dr. A.S. Nam from Massachusetts General Hospital and her whole group, including a group from Harvard, for this picture. But what I want you to see is that this is a mouse sciatic nerve, and notice in polarized light on the right-hand side that the nerve turns blue under crossed polars. Now here is a nerve fiber collected from Nanotyrannus. In the top picture, under bright field, you don't see any salient characteristics. But when you put it under polarized light, as in the bottom photograph, you notice that the nerve adopts the blue color like we saw in the previous photograph. Now the claim has been made that these are merely fungal hyphae. And so we have the same nerve here. Now it's not in polarized light, but we've stained it with mycoval stain to look for the septi in the fungal hyphae. And this is under fluorescence. And as you can see, there are no fungal hyphae. This is not a fungus. It's a nerve fiber. Here now is a longer and more intact nerve fiber collected from the Triceratops condyle. And this was removed through decalcification, and it's simply under crossed polars at extinction. And so you can see beautiful birefringence, and you're beginning to see the banding across the nerve fiber as you go down the fiber. If we examine the fiber at a higher magnification, now the crimping nodes that crimp the myelin sheath to the axon fiber become clear. So we're looking at a myelated axon released through decalcification from a triceratops condyle with clear nodes running up and down the fiber. And here at an even higher magnification, we can clearly see the axon traveling down the center of the fiber. So researchers have been showing collagen fibers, blood cells, bone cells, and such from dinosaur remains, but the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute is showing shocking presence of things that have never been shown before. These are all world first discoveries made by the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute. What if we test for the presence of RNA using acridine orange? Well, first we have to identify a nerve fiber, and here is one that is glowing happily by refringent in polarized light, and now we'll stain it with acridine orange and see how it responds. So here is the same nerve fiber. I did damage it a little bit after I had to take off the cover slip and stain it, but you can see under fluorescent light it is reporting a strong RNA signal due to the acridine orange attaching to the RNA. So we have conclusive evidence then that these nerve fibers are in fact tissues. A final stain can be used to show that these tissues do behave like natural tissues do. And so here we have identified a nerve fiber in polarized light we see the birefringence of it, and now we can stain it with a vital stain to demonstrate that it is taking up stain as normal tissues do. And so here is the same nerve fiber, now stained with toluene blue, showing that as tissue, it behaves like tissue by taking up a vital stain. So we have several lines of evidence showing conclusively that we have collected intact nerve fibers from Nanotyrannus and Triceratops condyle. I think you can clearly see that the work that we're presenting 
such as the lecture we did at Lower Columbia College, is state-of-the-art. It's cutting-edge. We're revealing things found in dinosaur soft tissue that you're not seeing anywhere else. And our commitment is to give this away for free. We don't charge for any of our materials. We don't charge to go out and do lectures. We just go. And uh, we trust that God is going to give us the finances to, to do that. You can go online to our website at dstri.org and you can download the papers for free. You can download a copy of our book, Old Stretchy. There's a second book in production right now, which we hope to get online for free soon. And we do hope that you'll consider, before the end of the year, uh, supporting the Dinosaur Soft Tissue Research Institute. None of us draw any income from the work that we do. We're all volunteers, and uh, we just depend on the Lord for the supplies, the money, and the resources that He gives us. But we would love to have, first of all, your constant prayer support. And if you so choose at the end of the year to support us financially, uh, we are a 501c3 organization uh, headquartered in Mansfield, Texas. So thank you so much for watching. In the next installment, we're going to show you from the, the end of the lecture uh, all of the osteocytes, all of the bone cells, and how they respond to the different kinds of stains that you've seen these tissues respond to. So look forward to that in the near future. And thanks again for watching.